Well, hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Dwayne Butcher of Lean Frontiers and I'll serve as your host for the day. I'm pleased to be joined, who you can see on screen, with Joe Murley of the Murley Group and Tim McCracken of IOBEA for our webinar slash discussion, if you will. Uh, look, uh, this session is being recorded and will be available for you to share with others in your organization if you so choose. Uh, you'll look for an email shortly after this webinar, within an hour or so. Uh, you'll have a link then in that email to uh, view the recording. And again, feel free to share that throughout your organization. And let me just mention briefly uh, while at the beginning here that I am going to mention at the end of our time here an opportunity for you to learn more and go a little bit deeper into this conversation uh, through a workshop that's being offered. I'm just going to mention now that the workshop is being held September 9th and 10th uh, in Austin, Texas. But let's get on with our conversation and then I'll circle back around and talk more about uh, further learning opportunities. So I'd like to welcome our guests, uh, uh, Joe and Tim. Thanks for being here. And Tim, I found out you're calling in from Paris, and uh, Joe, you're calling in from where? I'm calling in from Mystic, Connecticut, not nearly as glamorous as Paris. <laughs> I have to apologize. <laughs> and I'm calling in from uh, Indianapolis, Indiana, which is just as glamorous as Paris. <laughs> so thanks for, thanks for being here. Um, visual management uh, seems to be one of those, it's just kind of a core, basic, fundamental element of uh, any lean management system. Why is this conversation then so important if it's considered something basic to the lean management system? Why are we having this conversation? Joe, you wanna take that? Sure, uh, I'll, I'll kick it off. Um, this has become a very important topic for me personally because I've seen lots and lots of lean transformations through the years, including those that I was directly responsible for myself. And what I observed over time was that early in our training and education on lean, one of the things we do is we go visit other lean organizations and we go and we see. Well, what do we see? We see the visuals. So there's a really strong tendency to pick up on the visuals that most attract our eye and bring them back to our own workplaces. And this process gets repeated over time. And what I found was that people would be applying these visuals because it had an attraction to them individually. And pretty soon you have this collection of disconnected, even though they're really attractive tools, and they don't necessarily tie together into a system that supports leader standard work, lean leadership behaviors, and problem solving at the working level. So it, it inspired me to sort of back up and work with the other experts in my field to think about how would we go back about designing a system that tells us where we need visuals, for what purpose, and what's the best format and media for that particular point in the value stream. Yeah. That's, that's actually one of the things, uh, not a direct tie, Joe, but in, in running uh, conferences, uh, my, my fear is that people come to a conference and they hear the solutions that somebody's put in place and they go simply replicate that. That's, that's exactly what you're talking about. Somebody sees the solutions to a problem that someone have had in the form of visual management, simply replicating that, you're missing the real power that, that's underlying that. Yeah, I think what we end up with in the workplace is something that I characterize as Route 66 and the billboards. You know, when you drive down that, the remaining pieces of Route 66, they have billboard after billboard after billboard, and eventually the messages on the individual billboards get lost. It's, it's the pile of billboards that, that is the message. And we specifically don't want Route 66 in our factories and offices. Yeah. So instead of looking at the surface of the visual management, look deeper at maybe what's kind of underlying that. Tim, I don't yeah. want to cut you off if you had anything to add there. If not, I can. Yeah, so I, my, my only addition to that is I think visual management really cuts down to what is the problem that you're trying to solve. And I think you, you always need to start with a problem statement and understand 
uh, what it is that you're trying to achieve whenever you're doing visual management. And so while there are, you know, there are practices that are, um, that, that, that can be replicated, ultimately you need to find what is the specific practice that's unique to the, the, the business problem that, uh, that you're going through within your organization. And yeah. so, you know, we, we work across um, different industries, whether it's, you know, the automotive industry, which is where we came from, uh, or the life sciences industry, and the concepts of visual management can be replicated across uh, the industries, but the problems that they're solving are different. Yeah. And so you need to make sure that as you build this out, as you build out your visual management, that, that you're, you're really focusing on what is the problem that you're solving. Yeah. Okay. So that's visual management. We're actually, the, the focus of this particular conversation is digitally enhanced visual management. Um, what have you seen to be some of the, the key factors to success when a company goes down that road to digital visual management? Sure, so I, we've worked with a lot of companies that have done this. I think that the, the number one factor is whether or not they have a strong methodology in place and that you build the methodology and not try to, to, to necessarily do both at the same time when you're introducing a technology. In fact, the, 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 best, the most success we've had were with companies that already had paper-based visual management uh, yeah. in operation that they had gone through the process of learning it, understand what you're doing, and then you migrate over to digital to address the other issues that make digital a good a good fit to an organization. I think you know a couple of other things we've seen is that you do need to have good executive sponsorship that includes a commitment to whatever methodologies and or uh, lean practices that that you're putting in place, um, and then you also need to look at uh, the change management process. So there, there is a change management that you have to deal with when you're moving from paper to, to digital and you have to understand what are the, the rhythms and rituals that, that are going to uh, basically uh, be modified as you do that process. And then how do we make sure that we capture everything that we're doing and all the benefits of the, the, the paper-based visual management when you're moving into a digital format? Yeah, you know, Tim, further to that, what I've seen is very often when somebody starts to embark in using digital technology to enhance visual management systems, um, it will become the responsibility of somebody that's either in IT or very IT savvy, and it starts to lose touch with what's important at the ground level where, where the work actually takes place. And, and also, I, I think it's instructive to point out that uh, you know, Merley Group is a lean consulting group, an education group, and we've looked at lots of different companies that offer various technologies to support visual management. And not just to plug IOBEA here, but the thing that's different here, and I think speaks to this question, is when we looked at IOBEA, it had the flexibility. You were not, you were not trying to promote a prepackaged portfolio of visuals and instructing people which visual to use where but you're creating a, a blank canvas upon which we could work similar to paper and pencil tools so you could truly adapt solutions that made sense for your own business. And that's what attracted us to start talking and uh, start to think more deeply about how we could uh, you know, merge our support services. Mm -hmm. and, and to build on that as well, you, you mentioned IT, the IT organization. Uh, IT is sort of a, a, an interesting mix because uh, they, they are themselves um, consumers of visual management, whether you're doing agile or other types of, of, um, of visual management practices that are quite common in IT. And yet when they look at bringing in a tool for visual management to do it digitally, a lot of times they will say, well, let's, what, can we use something that we're already using such as Microsoft Excel or OneNote or, or things like that, that right. really don't capture the, 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 um, the, the, the ability to cre recreate that methodology in those organizations. So we've, we've seen that yeah. quite a bit. And so IT ha has been a friend, but it's also been a bit of a barrier as we've, as we've uh, implemented uh, digital inside uh, organizations. Mm. That's, that's interesting, Tim. I hadn't even considered the fact that, I, I would have assumed that if IT had moved down the road of agile and lean and that they would be more supportive of going down that road, but I can I, I can certainly see your point that they've got their answers. So why not just 
offer their answers for mm -hmm. the problem. Right, and, we, and we've seen also a lot of organizations uh, starting to deploy IOBEA inside the IT organization because of the fact that Agile has adopted so many of the lean principles uh, in it, especially when you're starting to scale it in large organizations. Yeah. So that, that's been something that's been more recent. Now, I think you have to clarify in your mind um, what, what are the criteria under which you start to use technology uh, versus just assuming that because there's a technology base, it must be better. You know, there are times when paper and pencil is appropriate, and there are times when technology is important. And the organization has to develop some standard work around that and, and understand, you know, when each of those gets applied. Um, otherwise, you end up with, uh, you know, hammers in search of nails. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So talking about starting, uh, the, the uh, successful organizations a lot of times will start with paper. Um, the, the reality is that paper is cheap, right? Post-it notes that I'm sticking up on a whiteboard or a wall, they're cheap. Uh, what what are some of the ROI benefits? How, how do you justify that move toward digital from that cost-effective paper solution? Sure. So uh, it is definitely cheap and easy to put paper post-it notes on a wall, and I think that that's one of the reasons why it's 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 uh, it's so attractive as well. But uh, ultimately, digital should be a multiplier effect to your lean and um, uh, your lean management benefits and your lean management ROI, whether that's reducing of waste, whether that's um, increasing the, the flexibility and delivery of products, whether it is, um, you know, basically all of the things that you want to achieve with uh, lean management, digital should be a multiplier to that. Now, we're usually the, the, the biggest challenges that customers are facing when they decide to go digital is that they have remote teams that they're trying to connect in. Yeah. And so, uh, and, and, and that's a very important thing that, that when we're looking at uh, deploying IOBEA, one of the things that, that organizations want to do is be able to, to capture the benefits of having a remote team, be able to, be, to recruit the best people and be able to uh, operate as a team. But at the same time, you want to be to, to uh, have all of the, the benefits of a co-located team where you're be able to collaborate and, you're able to really go through the process of um, sharing information and uh, and having that visibility of uh, what's happening with the team as well as alignment across the team. And so when, when you're looking at from a purely financial perspective, you definitely have to have the multiplier effect, but you also want to be able to basically increase the speed of delivery but and uh, reduce things such as travel cost and, and others that, that may uh, impact your organization as a result of having remote teams. You know, I think too, you, you have to take a look at what you're trying to accomplish in, in the lean management system. If you look at the leader standard work suite of Gemba walks, reflection meetings, and on responses and one-on-one -on -one, um, de uh, subordinate development, um, you're looking at if you are physically remote, you're either going to pay time and money to come and fly in so you can get face to face to make those things happen and Tim you know uh, spoke to that uh, but often what happens is people don't fly in and those things don't happen yeah. and therefore the lean management system is not working the way it should you know if you don't do the gimbal walks if you don't do the reflection meetings uh, because it's difficult or you don't do them with the proper frequency you're not going to get the results uh, that we look for in a lean transformation. And I think you have to be thinking about uh, that aspect of standard work that you're dealing with. Is it frontline level type work or is it strategic? You know, if we're doing a, a value stream review where once a week we're getting into a war room situation and looking at how we're doing and migrating from the current state to the future state, invariably there's people that are not going to be on location. Uh, very few companies have everything under one roof anymore. So what ends up happening is you have these meetings without everybody present, or they're on a speakerphone, so they don't really see the visuals, or maybe they've got some printouts that they're working off of. But the ability to collaborate in real time and sort of pick up a post-it note, a virtual post-it note, and move it from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen to illustrate what we're talking about, uh, you completely lose that ability. 
uh, if you don't have some sort of digital method to do that. So again, you have to look at how these tools are going to get used and apply the technology where it makes sense to do so and not apply it where it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And, and I would just add to that, uh, and you brought up something interesting, Joe, when you're talking about being able to um, to have not only escalations to, to sort of management level and, and have a difference between management level and and, um, and being able to get visibility across different organizations, but also um, ultimately when, you know, when you're working with like corporate headquarters, for example, and they want to be able to connect in with each of the remote offices or each of the factories and have visibility into what are what's happening with the operations, what's happening with the continuous improvement that that is is occurring. Uh, an executive can't be in all locations at at once, and so being able to drive that visibility across uh, not only an internal team or a team that has uh, different different people in different locations, but also up up the management chain, I think is really critical. And one of the, the reasons why we've seen um, the deployment of visual management, uh, digital visual management uh, become effective uh, across uh, our customer base. Yeah. You know, uh, just speak here personally for a second with with uh, the lean frontiers team we're all located here in indianapolis so you think there's not an opportunity for us to use any type of digital management we don't have a distributed team however we are often gone out of the office for a week or two and if i could i wish i could take my computer and walk out through the hallway and you'll see how heavily we rely on visual management well, when we're out of town, the entire team of us are out of town for a week or two weeks at a time. Uh, we're we're at a loss, um, and so that's something that we've been uh, uh, struggling with and and been talking about. And so, even yeah, just, that, you know, yeah. on that note, uh, we had one of our largest customers. Uh, the one of the executives came to visit us in Paris, and uh, he has a weekly stand-up meeting that he conducts with with the team. And uh, he did it from our office in Paris. And so one of the, the benefits that you, can, that you can do is maintaining that connection with the team, regardless of where you are, regardless of your schedule, so that uh, ultimately you can maintain the rituals as well that are important to the, the continuous improvement process. Yeah. So if an organization decides that they want to go down that road uh, to, to using visual tools, how do you decide um, what to leave out, what to include um, as, as you make that, that transition from physical to digital? Yeah, I can tell you, we, we always go back to the, the value stream view of things. You know, try to understand the flow of value through the organization and the value stream mapping tool and enterprise mapping and business model canvases and things like that are excellent tools to help cross-functional teams see those things. But then superimpose on that, once you've got the value stream view, um, the, the flow of the management system. So when we think about this, there's individual management, you know, somebody doing the work day in and day out. There's a set of visuals for that individual. There's a set of visuals for the team as they're passing work off to one another. Then there's a set of visuals for the facility that the uh, the manager of the facility is going to want to walk through and see how the various teams are interacting to give the macro result. And then there's a set of visuals at a strategic level uh, and an executive level as well. So each of these management activities have certain aspects of information that have to be shared. And I want to reflect back on something that Tim was talking about, that a lot of the draw for these electronic systems are from executives that can't get to everywhere that they want to be. But it's also got to be kept in mind that what that executive should be wanting to see is not just the information that's being provided to them, but what the front line sees at the same time. And that's what some of these digital tools enable us to do. That I'm not just being fed a report or fed something that was edit edited and provided to me, but I'm sort of virtually walking into the workplace and seeing what the worker sees and, and thinking about what should be happening versus what's actually happening, and hopefully having some discussions at that level as well, because that's what the Gemma Walk is about, right? Pointing out where you see differences between what should be happening and is actually happening, 
and then using that as an entree to a conversation of do you agree that what's actually happening is different than what should be happening and, and start walking down the path of some structured problem solving. Um, also, the, the visual suite in general falls into two major camps. There's a whole set of tools around visual process adherence and another set of tools around visual process performance. On the visual process adherence side, you're basically answering the questions of, is there a process here, right? Is there, is there a standard? Do I know what good looks like, what the outcome of this process is supposed to look like? Is there a process? And am I adhering to the process? Can I see visually whether or not somebody's adhering to the process? And am I getting that resultant that I'm looking for? And then finally, is product and information flowing as expected so that the rest of the team can integrate in with it? So those tools would match up with a separate set of tools that then would be the second set of management questions of, now that I know that the process is being adhered to and we're achieving the standard, am I getting the performance in people, quality, delivery, cost, and rate of continuous improvement that we're seeking as a business? And if not, then maybe I need to go back and work on the process because uh, that's a very different problem than somebody just not adhering to the process. Hmm. So we use these, these layers of information flow to help us understand where we need visuals and what type of visuals they need to be, and then start to work on them and develop them over time. And I think, you know, Tim talked earlier uh, about an important point, especially early on. You, you want to use a methodology that's easy to change. Uh, because lean is about continuous improvement. Well, continuous improvement applies continuous change, and the visuals are not immune to that. Right? Whatever visuals we're putting up there, we better be walking into it with a mindset that this is going to change 10 times in the next 10 months, and we need to be able to do it easily so somebody doesn't say, ah, it's just too hard to change. Let's just leave it the way it is because we know it's hard to change. Uh, you wouldn't do that with the, the process by which you produce the product or service. So why would you do that with the visuals that you're managing to? Right? Everything should be subject to continuous improvement. Yeah, I, I would reinforce that as well. I mean, I think if we look, we, we talked about some of the success factors. I think one of the areas where um, it, it's, it's critically important is to make sure that you're constantly going back and looking when you're doing digital visual management to have the ability to, to shift and to to basically go through the PDCA process um, regularly with your visual management and with your um, with your boards that you build out and then that you're using within um, within that context. I think just to add something else uh, in 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 the context of sort of when you use digital and and some of the pitfalls of digital as well. You know, what one of the the questions that always comes up when we're speaking with customers is, can you do an automated um, basically automate the, the different things that you're showing within your visual management board. And I think one of the dangers there is that a lot of data can be hidden when you automate. Uh, and so we want and we encourage people to take ownership over what you put on a board. And as part of that ownership, it should not just be a, a, a uh, an indicator that's automatically updated from some back end system someplace, but rather something that's purposely put uh, within that uh, that visual management system or that visual management board, so that it's meaningful and someone takes ownership over that when when they're when they're adding that. You know, Tim, I, I gotta I have to jump on that because that is such a pet peeve of mine, uh, and I've seen so many pitfalls in that regard. And I'll, I'll share a very quick story. Uh, it deals with a winemaking company, very large winemaking company, has big bottling operations. And, you know, we've done a lot of work with them over the years. And I, one time I was on site and somebody said, the, um, the engineer responsible for these lines wants you to come out and meet with them because they've done something to improve the visual management in, in these bottling lines. So I came out and, and by the way, prior to this, you know, they had four by eight boards up with paper that they would put tick marks on every day to look at breakage and productivity and quality, et cetera. And they had taken the board down and put up a flat panel display that showed four charts at a time and then tumbled through uh, so that ultimately all those charts could be seen. 
And he said, this is much better because we've put sensors in place and the operators on the line don't have to take time out of production to come update these slides. So I said, so he goes, what do you think? You know, because sometimes they call in people like me just to affirm that what they did was the right thing. <laughs> uh, so I said, I don't know. What do you think? And he goes, well, I think it's a lot more productive this way. I said, okay. So I'm looking at the slides, and I noticed that, you know, I happened to know that did a setup reduction event some months prior and dramatically reduced the changeover time for this big line. So we went walking down the line, and we talked to one of the operators on the line. I said, so what do you think of this new system? Oh, it's much better. I don't have to go up there and put the tick mark on. Okay, so uh, so what's going on with the setup? It, you know, it looks like you guys did a really great job a few months ago, but it's going back in the other direction. He goes, really? I said, yeah, yeah, come on up here. Let me show you. You know, so we stand there, and we're tumbling through the slides. And sure enough, you know, what, what was an hour and a half setup got reduced to 15 minutes, was now up to 25 minutes. He goes, ah. Yeah, I, I don't really know. And he started guessing as to why that was happening. So, you know, the act of updating this information is a communication tool, right? The people internalize this information, and then they come to the team passionate about it, and they get inspired to identify and solve those problems. And you don't ever want to lose that magic in, in the genie, the, the magic in the bottle uh, of that as you go in and use these digital tools. You can't lose that. Hmm. Yeah, you you create a distance between the 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 operators and the reality yes. by there being digital <laughs> automation right. between the two. Right. Yeah. Right. And so I think you know one of the things that 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 we're trying to get across is that when you're going digital, and then this is part of the philosophy that that was behind uh, the Iobea software is that we really want to make sure that we are maintaining the interaction between people and maintaining the ownership and the alignment of people on the teams, even if they're in remote locations, but you should not be changing that as you're moving from paper to digital. Hmm. Well, um, I wanna ask a couple more questions here. Um, we kind of set our target time around 30 minutes, so I wanna try to get as close to that as possible. Um, I'm curious, uh, whenever you talk about uh, digitally enhanced visual management, you see um, uh, large format touchscreen devices. Required? Not required? So, so I have a couple thoughts on this, and I'll, you know, I'm curious what Joe's thoughts are as well. Um, generally speaking, so it's not necessary to always use a large format touchscreen. We have people connecting in with um, with computers, with with uh, iPads, etc. The important thing, though, is that uh, there are a couple things. One is that if you're together in the same room in a co-located environment, you want to be able to have that that tactile and um, you want to be able to have that interaction that you had with a paper board. And maintaining that interaction when you're in person uh, in the same location, I think, is really critical, not only for the the change management, right? So the process of moving from paper to digital, but also maintaining the interaction between people so that you can share ideas. And so we absolutely recommend that everybody for their co-located teams are using a large format uh, touchscreen device. Uh, and and, and then the, I think that you know there is a little bit more budget associated with that, but ultimately the value that you get out of that for your, for your teams that are working together uh, is well worth anything that you would spend to, to, to add the, the large format touchscreen display. Yeah, I, I want to concur on that. I mean, right now we're planning on a, on a major activity with a very large multinational company, and there's going to be several value stream mapping exercises. And for each of these value stream maps, we will typically set up a war room that shows the future state value stream, the value stream improvement plan, a set of metrics that we're going to measure uh, process performance against, and then Kaizen event profiles that, that identify the specific improvement activities and probably some other information. And you know, we as human beings can look at a large wall like that and sort of zero in on that in a mosaic fashion and infer cross-references pretty readily. That's a, that's a thing that human beings actually do pretty well. The problem when you start to zero in is now I can only see one thing at a time 
So I'm, I'm at the mercy of the person that's controlling the screen and what I can see. So in this particular instance, uh, the solution we're coming up with is that there's going to be a master control room, master war room, where we'll have a large, probably a couple of large format screens so we can see things at a glance. Uh, but then there'll be some satellite rooms for people that are in Asia and, and far off places where they're going to get a more limited view. And uh, admittedly, that's a compromise. But at least the value stream manager and their direct reports in the master room will see the bigger picture. So I don't think any of these things is 100% perfect or better. You know, there's always compromise in this. But we can't forget that that visual environment of being able to see several things at once is part of this. And uh, to the degree that we can keep that, we should endeavor to do so. Well, I heard what I wanted to hear, and that's that I should buy a large format touchscreen. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but for watching a football game, it's not the same thing. You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> thanks for the clarification. Well, let, let, me, let, me, let me transition here for, for a moment. Uh, from our conversation to uh, this was, we had a very large response to this particular webinar, which tells me a couple things. Uh, one is that people are feeling what I've felt. When, I don't know if you saw this, but when I posted about this webinar and then this, this workshop on LinkedIn, I said, this is the workshop that I've been waiting for for 10 years. There's, there's lean management workshops, there's visual management workshops and digital vision. But this combines the, the, the two that support and um, encourage one another. So I'm excited about what you guys are doing uh, in Austin, Texas, uh, September 9th and 10th with this, uh, this, this workshop of uh, digital and enhanced visual management within a lean uh, uh, management system. Um, so I'm curious if anyone is interested in learning more about that type of engagement, who, who's the right audience for that? Who, who should come and attend something like that? Yeah, I, I feel very strongly that you ideally should have at least two people coming from your organization. <clears throat> One that's a you know, fairly high level manager that has a scope of responsibility that's actionable. Uh, and it's actually going to use these tools and interact with people off of these tools mm -hmm. and somebody else that's going to have more of a nuts and bolts responsibility to help put these things in place. And that, that combination is going to be powerful in walking out of that classroom and having it turn into to action. Uh, too often we get people in classrooms that are lean leaders and, uh, you know, they're very passionate about these things and they leave that room very enthusiastic. And then they go back and, you know, they'll put up visuals or they'll do some things or maybe they won't even be allowed to do it. And the wind gets taken out of the balloon pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, and also, conversely, in defense of management, mm -hmm. um, they have real issues as well, right? They have real needs as well. And that lean leader should hear that. And yeah. they should be bouncing these things off of one another and say, you know, we go back, we're going to do this, and it's going to be better for the organization, and we're actually going to stick with it. And that perhaps is the most important thing. You, you don't want a series of visuals going up, Route 66 and the billboards, and managers looking at it, and the lean leader is going to walk them around, and they're all going to say, oh, that looks really good. This is not politically correct to say it doesn't. And so they're going to say, looks like, and then maybe they'll say, you know, but if I had this one more thing, it would really be helpful to me because they want to put their, their signature on it. So you add one more thing, right? Then another manager comes back in, you add another one more thing. Another manager comes around, you add another one more thing. And meanwhile, those managers all go back to their conference rooms and look at the charts and graphs they've always looked at, and they don't really use the visuals for what it was intended for. So that dyad is critical to the success, I think. That's in some respects, getting the voice of the customer with the customer, in this case, being the, the, the manager. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, guys, uh, thanks so much for, for your efforts and not only sharing some insights uh, here today, but honestly, in putting together a workshop, as I said, that I've waited uh, 10 years for, and I'm eagerly looking forward to that. So if you are interested, uh, which I assume you are, if you've joined us uh, here today, 
If you're interested in learning more from uh, Joe and Tim, you could join us in Austin, Texas, um, September 9th and 10th. Um, if you're interested, we're offering a uh, $100 discount um, if you register using the discount code webinar. Um, please feel free to do that. And just so you're aware, this workshop is actually happening under the larger umbrella of Lean Leadership Week, which is uh, a couple of different summits, the Lean Accounting Summit, the Lean HR Summit. You do not have to participate in those summits in Lean Leadership Week in order to take part in this workshop. So when you go to register, you can simply select what you're interested in. By all means, we'd love to have you join us for the summits, but uh, at a minimum, uh, if you have a need to learn more about the lean management system and uh, digitally enhanced visual management, love to have you there with, uh, with Joe and Tim. So guys, thank you so much for your, your time and your expertise. And thanks to everyone who participated in today's session. And I guess uh, next I'll see you is in Austin. Great. Okay. Have a Very great well. day. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye -bye.